anything with the network? Very good morning. Uh, thanks a lot for joining us for this special uh, session of Times Verified, where we tackle, where, where we talk about the menace of fake news, where we talk about the menace of misinformation. Uh, my name is Pankaj Doval and I'm a national editor of the Times of India. Uh, we had the first session where we spoke about uh, misinformation during the period of COVID-19 and on vaccines. And this is a special session uh, where we talk about financial fraud and financial scams. As you know that uh, the, the digital activity across the internet grew many fold during the period of pandemic and so did uh, the scams and the frauds. You know, uh, if, if I just talk about the scale of what is happening, how digitally connected we are today, uh, roughly uh, on an average, an Indian is using 16 GB of data per user per month. Uh, and this used to be just a few hundred MBs just a few years back. Uh, and we've got 800 million people who are constantly online. So we are a very digitally connected society and the frauds are of various use. Uh, we have frauds related to senior citizens and pensions. We have frauds and scams related to lotteries. We have frauds and scams related to inheritance, job offers. There are ransomware. Uh, there are frauds related to UPI. Uh, and as experts say that these frauds are either led by greed, they are led by fear, or there are various, various reasons that people fall into this trap. Uh, alarmingly, this is not a phenomenon only in uh, rural or semi-urban areas, but this is also a phenomenon which is very much prevalent in urban areas and metros. So I guess we, need, we all need to be very, very, uh, uh, you know, we need to guard ourselves against such frauds. Uh, and to discuss this further uh, and to inform our users, we have a very, very uh, enlightened panel with us. And let me uh, introduce the panel. We have Ms. Charlie uh, Warrior. She's the executive director and business head uh, of retail at Federal Bank. Uh, welcome, ma'am. Uh, we also have Mr. S.S. Sarma. Mr. Sarma is a director at CERTIN. This is the National Cyber Security Agency of the country. And obviously, he, he uh, CERTIN keeps a very close eye on all kinds of frauds, not only financial frauds, but so many other frauds. Uh, we have Mr. Ranjit Bellary. Uh, he's uh, an associate partner at Ernst & Young. And uh, Mr. Uh, Ranjit keeps a track of all kinds of frauds which are happening, the numbers, uh, are they growing, are they coming down, which kind of frauds are coming into the market. Hopefully, he'll give us more insights on that. And we have Amit, Amit Raylan uh, from Mfitternet. He's the co-founder of Mfitternet. And he, they track ad frauds, the kind of various frauds that uh, consumers are facing today and what, uh, how people are being trapped into uh, many of these uh, malpractices. So, uh, uh, Big welcome to all you guys, and uh, let me begin by asking uh, a general question for opening uh, remarks to the, uh, you know, to the panel. How serious is the situation right now? Uh, and you know, do we are we really in a very difficult uh, position at this point in time uh, when we look at how online fraudsters are acting and uh, behaving? Uh, if I start with Charlie, um, thank you very much, um, Pankaj. Good morning, everybody. Indeed, an honor and a privilege to be on this panel. I have to commend uh, TOI and the entire network for taking up this whole topic. And I think this whole Times Verified piece of it is really very important for the, for the general economy as a whole, not just on financial scams, but I think overall what you're doing in this area, given the proliferation of social media and um, the ease with which communication is transmitted nowadays, the work you're doing in this area is truly commendable. Federal Bank is proud to be associated with this. Uh, turning to kind of today's topic and some of the opening remarks from me on your point, uh, Pankaj, on financial scams. Uh, absolutely, I think we can, uh, we may kid ourselves, but I think the numbers do speak for themselves. The numbers have been increasing. Um, has it reached alarming proportions? I think there is, uh, you know, with all the actions that the regulators, the, the law enforcement agencies and the banks are doing, we do believe that um, there, is a uh, there is a fair level of control on it. Now, what's the backdrop for this increase? So I'll start with that, actually. 
first i think there has been more access to banking if you go back um, you know 8 10 years back banking was uh, opening a bank account was um, quite difficult in that sense you know but between the jandhan aadhar mobile trinity that has happened the access to banking has become much more um, open so today we have a very large number of accounts opened it's easier to open an account through the digital uh, banking process because your aadhar gets authenticated your pan can get authenticated where required um the regulations allow for video kyc to be done so generally speaking yes banking itself has become more accessible so that is one kind of part of the uh, um the backdrop the second is the proliferation of digital and i think you alluded to that um even before the pandemic if you go back to the demonetization phase if you go back to the introduction of upi if you go back to the fact that imps has become 24 by 7 and obviously the pandemic has come in the is an access to digital transactions has also increased so i think if you look at it in the context of the fact that you know banking opening of bank accounts has become relatively easier and um, digitization has become more prolific and um, available in the country i think that's what's probably created this greater awareness that there is the financial scams now why do these financial um, kind of issues occur or scams occur um, i can boil it down in my view to three items one is um, you know the whole human emotion of fear or greed it's one of these two emotions that we see fraudsters are taking access to either it's something is required to be done very urgently so there is a fear factor or you know something is unbelievable and therefore people kind of get lured by it that's one the other is literacy and i don't think it is just financial literacy i think it's more digital literacy is what we call it you know uh, people may be financially aware of what a passbook looks like what a savings account is what a current account is what the two ins and outs are but digitally how do you manage it you know how do you uh, traditionally people were used to going into a bank maybe they graduated to atms after that but today it's all very digitally connected so it's more digital literacy as the second piece three let's admit there are just so many new technologies out there uh, that fraudsters have been continually innovating on phishing wishing uh, ransomware malware i mean that's an industry by itself right pankaj so that's the kind of third i think the more important point to note is uh, what can we do about it and i'll talk about what banks like us are doing and probably what consumers are also go- have to do from a bank standpoint let me assure you it is very high on the priority of not just federal bank but all banks uh, for example federal banks uh, technology budget about 15 to 16% of the annual budget is devoted to cyber security and security related measures on making sure that we have the right technology we have the right uh, equipment etc i'll give you a couple of examples from a technology standpoint that probably makes it live for people uh, one example i have is i mentioned the fact that digital account opening is now quite prominent there are a lot of yeah. entities in the market who open accounts digitally on an end to end basis under the rules and regulations so something that we have done um, is introduce something called a face match and a liveness check in the account opening process what it really does is we noticed that fraudsters have a kind of you know identity theft in a more digital form has become quite prominent so what we've introduced in the account opening process in the digital account opening processes there is actually a match done between the face as we see it in the video yeah. camera with the face in the aadhar photo and using artificial intelligence and algorithms a match is done if the match yeah. doesn't meet we don't allow the customer to open the account we also do a liveness check because we've noticed that some people some people just use a dummy literally in front of the camera but we've now put in uh, and somebody else is speaking at the back you know yeah. so somebody is reeling out the otp from the back somebody is you know saying say this say this so now we don't allow that the c- account holder has to be there and the account right. holder has to actually prove that he is live and all this is through artificial intelligence and yeah. machine learning algorithms that's one yeah. example another example i can give you and this is something we owe uh, a lot of credit to rbi for is how we've now introduced all banks including federal have introduced what we call card controls so today when a debit card is sent out from the bank it is not enabled for e-commerce transactions it is not enabled for contactless transactions it is not enabled for international transactions it's only enabled for a place where you have to use a password like an atm or a point of sale terminal wherever there is no password required etc it is not enabled the customers specifically got to go either to mobile banking or to internet banking or call the call center identify himself and then switch on those capabilities so the choice becomes the customer 
he may choose not to switch on e-com, for example, or he may choose not to switch on contactless. That's a choice we've left with him. In right. addition, we've also allowed him the privilege of controlling the limits. I may say that I'm okay to do e-com, but no transaction should exceed 2,000 rupees. I'm okay to do something on international. Thing. So me, myself, for it's, example, I keep all my international connections off. I, you know, I'm off on international ATM. I'm off on international pause because I don't travel as much. So why should I keep it on? So those are examples of what the bank has been doing. The second thanks. part of what the bank has been doing is a huge campaign around what I mentioned, digital literacy. Um, so what we've really done is we've launched a campaign called Twice is Wise. Um, what it really means is think twice before you say anything. Think twice before you react to a WhatsApp message asking you for nice. money. Think twice nice. before you give your OTP. So we've run this campaign across multiple media. We are in working very closely with your team also, uh, Pankaj, on this. And we run this for the last one year, and it's a continuing campaign. I think we launched about... 30, about on an average, um, literally three a month of uh, snippets, you know, very small, easy to understand, people can relate to uh, on digital literacy, starting from the basics, don't compromise on OTP. If something is too good to be true, you can be sure it's not true. Um, so nobody's yeah. out there waiting to give you an inheritance. Nobody's out there waiting to give you money. So just be careful about it. So these right. are some of the measures that have been taken. So this trans, you know, earlier physical theft was very difficult, right? It was confined to a geographical area. If you had to rob a bank, it was not very easy. You had to physically go to the bank, get the access to the lockers, uh, the vault, et cetera. Today, yes. Now it can be done. Things. Now it can be done. Now it's, and there are no geographic boundaries, right? Pankaj, it is. Absolutely. So I think, yes, uh, banks like us have to take a lot of precautions and we are doing that as I gave you examples. And I think yeah. consumer also has to think. You know, from the very basic, um, you know, password, ensuring your password is changed often, ensuring the password is difficult, it's not your date of birth, it's not your spouse's name. From the very basics to the more complicated, never compromise on your OTP. I think those yeah. are uh, where the consumer also has to come up the curve. So I think that's really where I would say the numbers may sound alarming, but I think you've got to, we've all got to see it in the context of the evolution that the economy has had. Yes. Not only that, I guess uh, it's also constantly evolving. The uh, fraudsters are also constantly evolving and upgrading themselves. They're always that two steps ahead. Challenge. They're always two yeah. to four steps ahead. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, Mr. Sharma, uh, we come to you. Uh, they're always two to four steps ahead is what Charlie is saying. Uh, and that poses a big question. Uh, I would say challenge uh, to regulators and to cybersecurity agencies that by the time we are finding a solution to the first problem, they are all, they've already created a third or a fourth problem for us and even more advanced and technologically advanced. How, how do you tackle this issue? Because, you know, while everybody's uh, doing their bit of uh, awareness campaign, media like Times of India is doing it, banks are doing it, uh, uh, you know, people like Amit and Rajita are coming out with their reports. But despite that, so many sophisticated frauds are coming out and that too, they are getting, you know, more and more complex uh, to understand. How do you tackle this situation? Uh, uh, you know, it's it's a 24/7 job. Yeah, uh, thank you very much. First of all, uh, thank you very much for giving us the opportunity and uh, giving uh, audience to the government agency in this uh, interaction. And it's very important for us all uh, to reach out to uh, end users and citizens and uh, create awareness. That is the most important thing here. Uh, coming to your question, um, Prakash, uh, as uh, Shalini has mentioned. It, the frauds will evolve uh, as the technologies also evolve. And there's a tremendous growth in the digital transactions that are happening, uh, particularly post-COVID. And uh, more and more digitalization happened and more and more transactions are happening online. And uh, we all depend on the our uh, mobile and uh, online banking and all those things. Uh, why this happen and uh, how do uh, we track? Basically, uh, at uh, certain... We operate a 24 by 7 help desk and uh, we receive various incidents and complaints from uh, users as well as organizations. But the things are prioritized according to impact of the thing. And uh, the uh, overall ecosystem, uh, if you say, uh, the fraud ecosystem is there. Prosters are always uh, keep on evolving their methods and uh, channels of fraud and all those things. And mostly all these frauds mostly goes and involve an element of social engineering where somehow through some means they have to trick a user to divulge the information. That is one part. Second part is the technological infrastructure what they use. So to that extent, actually there are various steps and various measures are taken by the government, law enforcement, regulators, banks, 
we constantly work with uh, banks and RBI and other uh, users to uh, track and take down the phishing websites. The website mimicking as a banking website and uh, the website mimicking as income tax uh, website and uh, going to the user. Before the website is put up and it is caused large scale damage, this is tracked, it is reported, it is tracked, it is taken down. But by the time some damage happens, suppose yeah. a phishing mail, uh, phishing website is set up and an email or spam mail goes to 50,000 users, let us say, in one hour, at least two, three users are going to fall prey uh, and giving their uh, credentials. So these kind of, it's a large scale fraud that happens. Similarly, phishing scales. If you see overall fraud uh, uh, perspective, various kinds of frauds are evolving. Uh, if you understand each and every fraud is a different uh, modus operandi. And right. creating awareness to users for these frauds is important. But uh, nevertheless, various proactive measures are taken to track these fraudsters, track these phishing sites, phishing uh, calls, IDs, and take down those them. And everything uh, depends upon the reporting. Now, where from the actual trusted, uh, the initial report happens is from the user. The more users are aware, if suppose the yeah. uh, 100 users are targeted by a scam, even if one user reports to a responsible agency like a bank or uh, certain or law enforcement agency, the fraud can be uh, checked immediately. And uh, that is one part. Second part is what kinds of frauds happen? That also is very much important. We all have yeah. a collective responsibility to create more and more awareness. Why this yeah. on the first hand this fraud happen is because there is a dependency on the mobile and connectivity today. We are all yeah. user, we are all desperate to maintain our mobile connectivity. If for two minutes, if mobile signal is not there, we all get desperate because what happened? And if, we, if for five minutes, we don't get a WhatsApp message, we all get desperate what happened? I am I connected or not? So you have a intensity and an intent to get connected 24 by seven, always. Now here where the fraudster actually uh, uh, play on and the, the fact is intimidation that your SIM is going to get blocked. If you get this message, any user is bound to click on that and ah. react to that message. Even if it's a fraudulent message, your SIM is not going to be blocked like that. Even if the telecom service providers, banks, everyone uh, gives that message that it is not going to be happen like that and we never ask for your OTP and all those things. The user's uh, fear and uncertainty and doubt is what is uh, played upon by the fraudsters. That is one kind of intimidating uh, factor that your uh, KVC is not there, so your bank account will be blocked. And yeah. these kind of, so you have to create assurance to the users that your bank account or a, a service account of telecom is not going to be blocked uh, without any prior notice or uh, like that. This kind of awareness need to be created. Right, but right. Is right. that a place in, in mind? We are all, uh, normally what happens is the positive message uh, takes a lot of time to sink in, but the negative message spreads very fast. Like you said in the early, er, earlier thing, the fake messages, they uh, take, uh, they spread very fast. The misinformation or uh, those kind of things. That is one kind of uh, product. Second part is technically, there are vulnerabilities like ATM card skimming. The card skimming devices are connected to the ATMs uh, where, and users are not aware of these devices. And now yes, user is not aware of these devices which are connected to ATMs, which are used to collect uh, uh, the skimming device, collects the credentials of the card, and then it is misused. But whatever way the uh, credentials are connected, the uh, as Ms. Shalini mentioned, there is a second factor check, that is OTP. So even if a uh, faster has your credit card number or bank account number, your date of birth, your details, exactly. everything, to breaches, to mature a transaction, they need your OTP. To collect the OTP, two, three methods are used. I want to just uh, create awareness about that method. Is One part is uh, when you put up something, some device, some uh, material at the on-sale forum, they say that I want, I'm interested in purchase of your uh, this particular material, sofa or TV or fridge or whatever. And uh, I'm interested and I'm uh, transferring money to you, to your account, to check. So they transfer 10 rupees and this uh, user receives 10 rupees uh, in money. Now they say that I want to transfer full amount of 50,000. You give me your OTP, and OTP will come to you. So the most unfortunate thing is users not, are not aware that to receive money, you did not give any OTP, but users give because you are getting money uh, online. Within five minutes, you are getting to going to get a 50,000 rupees. So in the desperation, people give the OTP. So that, that kind of awareness is not there in the uh, giving your OTP. Similarly, right. through various methods, ultimately the, uh, the thing goes to collection of OTP. The main message to users is the moment someone is asking that uh, you are getting a code or OTP or something, 
it they right. will not need otp they will say that some code will come to your account and you give us so that you will get the lottery amount transferred immediately those kind of thing ultimately some number they want that number is the what is required number one point number two point is uh, uh, like they also want uh, some kind of app to be installed so uh, like recently the main uh, some e-commerce uh, giant is giving some uh, gift Uh, on their 20th anniversary or 30th anniversary, the message circulated got through WhatsApp and other social media platforms. People fall prey, and they say that there are there will be five questions that are to be answered. Once you answer these five questions, your number will be eligible for the gift. And once the gift uh, you are eligible for gift, whatever your question may be wrong, you are eligible for gift always. And once you are eligible for your gift, then they will say that now you are in the final stage. Yeah. Now you install this particular app. so that you will uh, get the further uh, course of action for processing can be done that app is an apk file so you any user should not install any uh, app or apk from an untrusted source yeah. that apk file that is coming through message or facebook link or whatsapp yeah. link should not be installed and there is a check again in the mobile phone itself in the security settings that allow apps to be uh, installed from untrusted sources by default it is unchecked you should not uncheck that particular thing and uh, get the app installed always uh, install app from a trusted so uh, app store like uh, play store or so and even if you are uh, downloading from a trusted source there are uh, certain factors that have to be verified so these so kind broadly, of different things are there uh, so this is endless as uh, mentioned these scams are endless and yeah. uh, but measures are been taken the important thing is to report anything suspicious to any agency be it land for right. there right. are various right. we can come to that resources part later yeah right, right, that right. my initial remarks regarding that no, no i i guess a uh, very interesting point where you see that you don't uh, need any otp to receive money first of all uh, be aware be careful about you know uh, signing up for any unverified apps which are giving you some gifts or anything so basically use your common sense and please uh, remember there is no inheritance coming like this uh, it may be a potential fraud 99.9% of the time uh rajit if i come to you now uh can you tell us about the scale of fraud and what kind of frauds are happening we mentioned a variety of frauds right now right from banking frauds to ransomware to uh, upi fraud and you know uh, frauds of uh, uh, you know coming through sale purchase platforms and all are they growing uh, uh, what is your assessment of that sure sure no thanks pankaj and, and and i think we've had some great thoughts from you know shalini ma'am and shoma sir Uh, very interesting i was actually making notes of all these points some of these aspects like what mr sharma told you know yeah. uh, you know the way you know fraudsters are using different ways while you know is it's i mean all of this is not new to us right i mean we've been hearing about this almost about a decade i would say right a lot of these scams have been happening a lot of these yeah. you know phishing activities have been happening uh, astonishingly when it comes to numbers right i think uh, india continues to be at the top when it comes to cyber crime right uh and and i think uh, primarily some of the reasons is what we are seeing already right one is obviously uh, the more and more people are you know uh, getting mobiles you know so it's easy access to you know technology and then they can you know easily open a bank account you know ease of you know sort of uh, digital connectivity has increased so more and more users are getting added given the population that we have <clears throat> 800 million is still i think we still have lot of people who will probably get connected in the next few years right so it's only going to increase right these numbers are not going to slow down right <clears throat> however i think a lot of initiatives have been happening uh, both from the government and the industry to you know uh, educate the users i think that's really important right now uh, while we've already seen different kinds of cyber crime whether it's related to on organizations on individuals related to banking frauds kyc related stuff upi you know uh well, a typical uh, couple of things that i can share is uh, off lately a lot of uh, scams around bitcoin right again a very lucrative way in which you know we are seeing uh, uh, you know there are dummy exchanges being created dummy cryptocurrency exchanges being created right and tricking and this i'm talking about not the the general crowd who are just new you know to stuff right this is to people like you know who are properly educated you know who know about this stuff but then obviously they fall prey to it right so there are different kinds of you know frauds happening to different levels of users you know while uh, you know users uh, are some users are you know maybe they are not aware about you know some of these things but some users who already are aware about these things there is a different way in which the fraudsters try to trick them maybe say okay 
this is a this is a cryptocurrency exchange you can invest this much amount you know you know obviously it will be like 10 times 20 times you know within the next 3 months 4 months right so uh, cryptocurrency being one of it second is uh mr sharma talked about installing of you know software you know an interesting thing that we are seeing is off late there are a lot of uh, you know uh, people who are using home computers or home laptops right there are a lot of these pop ups that come up saying you know your uh, laptop has been hit with a ransomware you need to install this update windows update yeah. immediately and then you know obviously then you will be safe right so typically these kind of things also come up you know especially people who are logging in from home off late you know there's a lot of increased in you know remote work from home situation right so that's another area yeah. where fraudsters are obviously they know that a lot of people are you know not having the same kind of security that a typical office laptop will have they try right. to trick them you know into doing this stuff so it's it's only going to increase it's not going to decrease for sure i think uh, obviously as as i think uh, you know we have heard about uh, some of these comments where a lot of activities happening in terms of educating the users right a uh, couple of things that i can think of is one is obviously a lot of these uh, you know notices or messages that keep coming up from rbi a lot of these advertisements keep coming up. i think we should increase more and more of that and right, maybe right. Uh, some of these messages you know not just being uh, in in the form of a written or you know an advertisement maybe some videos also will help you know because at right. the end of the day people are interested in watching videos <laughs> right, right 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 that will be an interesting way to maybe educate the, the right users. Uh, but uh, you know uh, amit now coming to you uh, like what should one do when you know you are faced with such kind of a situation where you are kind of caught in one of these uh, traps uh, often you know you wonder who to complain to there is a helpline which, uh, which which i don't think many people are aware of even if you go to the police or cyber police it is not very easy what is the remedial action that people should take can you okay perfect so i just take one additional instance which is uh, bring to everybody is noticed by this medium i think uh, one is the whole fake customer care i mean the whole yeah. customer care elements is something like if i have to go to any of my service provider whether it is a bank whether it is an operator mobile operator any kind of services i want to consume maybe servicing an ac yeah now probably what will you do you will just go on search do a quick search for a customer care details and you start acting on it but now imagine the audacity suppose i go to a bank and say okay i if i am an icic and an hdfc bank provider i or a federal bank provider i go i lo- i typically will do whatever comes on first i click on the customer care number now the whole customer care journey is compromised because it looks like it is being done and as consumers one should be really careful around these areas yeah and similarly to this would be the whole google qa i mean you do question and answers on google because that's an easier source of information now the yeah. q and a is another another source of information which which is being deduped or which is being dislodged from that stuff so i definitely want to bring this to notice to all particularly this crypto was an interesting one everybody wants to do instant money uh, but the basic customer care is extremely extremely one should be vigilant on and uh, i think we have got a lot of requests from all the banks saying that okay this needs to be corrected and yeah. uh, particularly from mr shall search stand uh, look like websites of fake customer care should be definitely looked into yeah. because that's need of an hour yeah, uh, whereas in terms of if i get defrauded uh, yeah Please. i'm sorry second is a problem yeah second the question is, the question what you said wo- i'm not audible patchy actually Okay. Is it is it okay? Yeah, boy, it's actually cracking. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, second stuff is on what do we do uh, in terms of how do we solve it? I mean, there's no clear remedial measure per se, but yes, there is a reporting methodology to to the cyber cells, to cyber crimes, to cert, to your to your service provider. uh but is there a clear dispute redress redressable mechanism for a consumer answer is it's not that straightforward maybe we might have enough and more given on paper but yeah. in reality the reality in terms of solving it and sorting it out is slightly away and i think there is a more cohesive consortium led approach is required uh, as an industry as an industry to do a mitigation to do the dispute resolution 
maybe have ins- insurances covered to cover these kind of things because otherwise consumer is in a lurch uh the banks will say that you are you gave the otp and then i will not i am not responsible for this the uh, the cyber cell is something what will say that you please go and fetch for yourself this is too small a problem uh, yeah. so, so i would say that it it needs a larger collaborative approach among the ecosystem players the government uh, the service providers and the regulator because both rbi and tri uh, would play an important role and yeah. of course from a from a regulatory standpoint from a government platform providers also needs to take ownership for example if i am a google or if i am a facebook or an insta if something is recorded onto that and then i can't sit behind saying that this is not this is as per them it is it's a content is allowed but then they should also take more uh, regressive measures yeah. in solving this otherwise it becomes yeah. a very one sided affair for the so, so uh, thanks amit uh, shalli the thing is that you know uh, who compensates you know uh, any kind of a fraud like that may happen because of uh, the mistake of the bank's customer but it may also happen because of lack cyber security measures uh, deployed by any bank and not uh, you know so in this kind of a scenario who compensates because if the customer is defrauded you know it's not the traditional way of robbing a bank as uh, you had mentioned you know but it is more about you know coming on, through online channels and robbing the bank and at the end of the customer loses money so do the banks have enough uh, measures in place it's that tough. if it's their mistake they should be compensating the customers um so i think taking off from where amit left it and to answer your question first i think the modes of redressal for a customer are becoming increasingly clear now uh, to be fair i think the cyber security cell uh, which is more centrally driven more digitally oriented themselves are doing a good job i would um, you know considering the volumes that they have to deal with i think we have to be fair and accept the fact that they are accepting all the complaints and whatever they have been able to investigate they've been able to investigate but for a consumer yeah. the 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 right route is one uh, file a case with the cyber security cell and with the service provider since we're talking financial scams the customer should go back to the bank immediately the concerned bank yeah. immediately the rbi regulations came out i think about 4 years back from my memory which says that when there is an issue of this nature the first thing the bank is required to do is to make sure they give what is called shadow credit to the customer which means we uh, the bank is required to within an x period of time 7 days if my memory serves me right it but it's a very small period of time is yeah. required to say please uh, kind of you know at least ensure that the customer gets what is called a shadow credit he doesn't have he cannot access the funds but he at least knows that the bank has promised that has carved that amount and kept it aside for him it's evident in his passbook it's evident in his account then the investigation has to be done within a period of 90 days and based on the results of the investigation the final decision has to be taken yes uh, pankaj to be fair when the final decision is taken various considerations are there was the bank at fault were there any compromises on the part of the bank what was the extent of the compromise on the part of the customer uh, how much of awareness did the customer have when he or she got into the transactions because there are always two sides of the coin we've noticed instances for example where children use their parents account and you yeah. know uh, subscribe to games subscribe to things and the parent then comes and complains so those things to be fair why should the bank pay right so there are various uh, parameters that are considered while doing it and then the decision is taken in favor in favor of the customer or against but then let's remember that the customer also has another route after that to go to the ombudsman um and the ombudsman uh, have evolved now rbi has evolved the ombudsman scheme it's now an integrated ombudsman scheme very centrally driven the banking ombudsman then looks at it and the banking ombudsman looks at various parameters for example the banking ombudsman also looks and says the uh, and in this case both the banks come into the picture you know the customers bank which was where yeah. his account was there and debited and the beneficiary bank which is typically another bank so it yeah. could be federal's customer funds got credited let's say to state bank of india just as an example both banks come into the purview when it goes to an ombudsman and then the ombudsman looks at it at a more holistic level for the industry as a whole and right. typically will then decide what needs to be done we have seen instances where ombudsman have been very fair and said the customer had some liability the uh, the customer's bank had a liability the beneficiary bank also had a liability because all three had some areas where they could have done a better job so you know probably share the loss three one third one third one third we've come across instances of that nature also and uh, they've been quite practical about some of these things 
one of the things that banks have been uh, increasingly doing now is what are the controls? Uh, just give me a minute, Pankaj, and I'll take your question. Okay. Yeah. Uh, increasingly, banks are doing something, which is how do you monitor the behavior of the account, the transactions in an account in the first kind of 24 hours, the first one week, the first 30 days? Those are very, very critical to establish is the account uh, fraudulent or not, the beneficiary account. So the account would have been opened in a perfectly uh, legitimate KYC manner, like I said, you know, Aadhaar authenticated, address proof taken, all of that done. But if you notice a behavior in the account, which is slightly different to what you would expect, and this is through machine learning, et cetera, the banks have always done things like, you know, restrict the transactions in the account, call up, do a further check before allowing it. And banking ombudsmen have been taking those parameters also into account before taking a final decision. So the ecosystem is becoming better, but clearly more to be done. No, no, but uh, you know, if a customer has been duped because of any of these uh, frauds, on an average, how much time does it take for the customer to get all these things resolved? Because the bank is itself deciding whether it is on the wrong or not. You know, the customer may not know about the ombudsman, first of all. Yes. Uh, uh, does the ombudsman only come in after the bank has yes. decided or the yes. customer can uh, approach both, oh. the, uh, both of them together? The, because by the bank rules is sitting on a, in a position where it's making a decision. 90 days is the norm activity. given. Pankaj, 90 oh. days is the maximum given to a bank to investigate. As per yes. the rules, 90 days is the maximum given. That's the maximum. Most banks manage to finish investigations before that. So 90 days is the maximum to your question. The second question, the, the rules of the banking ombudsman are such that you can go to the ombudsman only after you have given the bank a chance to respond. I, otherwise, it would be unfair to both the bank and the ombudsman. Every ombudsman scheme works that way. The insurance ombudsman, the banking ombudsman. Give the bank a chance. But there is a maximum limit of 90 days. But what is the bank failure rate that you have noticed in these kind of cases? Like, for example, if there are 100 cases of fraud, uh, how many have been due to bank's negligence and how many have been due to customer Where, negligence? Uh, I don't have the data offhand, uh, Pankaj, but I can tell you that the bank's negligence would be extremely low because, to be fair, it's really the customers, I think, particularly on these kind of frauds, the UPI kind of frauds, the phishing, wishing kind of frauds, typically the customer compromise has been high. In the case of ATM, there could be some instances where the bank could have done a better job. I think uh, Mr. Sharma referred to skimming. Um, if the bank had not installed anti-skimming devices, if the bank has not uh, so, uh, you know, moved to chip-based cards, there will be a responsibility on the bank. But in the kind of phishing, wishing, typically it ends up being that the uh, bank has a very limited role. It's the customer right. who has compromised. Right. You know? uh, Mr. Sharma, I'll just come to you, but let me go to Amit first. Uh, Amit, uh... Do you, do you uh, feel that the customer is in a very, very uh, disadvantageous, uh, disadvantageous position in this case because, you know, it's the bank that makes a decision uh, and uh, that too, it takes 90 days to decide. Uh, and then finally, the bank may say that it's not my fault at all. And then I approach the ombudsman where the ombudsman may take, you know, its own sweet time. So the customer is in a very, very difficult position out here. Uh, I, I think, uh, sorry, Pankaj, before Amit responds, I think we need to recognize that both are under norms. The bank has a norm and 90 days is the maximum. The ombudsman right. also has a very robust scheme. I think the if I think they've reduced the period for the ombudsman for us to respond back to the ombudsman from the earlier 30 days to 14 days now. Within 14 oh. days, a bank should go back. So yes, there are norms around it, but I think Amit can give his perspective on this. Yeah. Yes. No, I think it's a, it's a quite a balancing act required... Uh, at, a, at an enterprise level, which is bank in this case, and a regulator and the government at the second. So from a consumer standpoint, I mean, if I wear a consumer hat, I would always say that, okay, I should be compensated. I didn't knew, I don't, I didn't knew that. But right. uh, but there's a there's a very thin, thin line in the balancing act, which is required because we have seen abuses at a customer level also, as Charlie Ma'am is saying that, and this is very, very prevalent in e-commerce industry where cash on delivery is a preferred route and then the cash on delivery is completely skimmed by the consumers but not by the by the by the marketplace for example uh, and similar kind of uh, behavior could be there in the banking domain also because identity impersonization is a very very easier way to sense and i i understand that there are a lot of kyc aml checks which is being done to do liveliness detection and others but unfortunately fraudsters and technology has enough means and ways to skim it so from that standpoint, uh, there are loopholes technologically. Uh, there are loopholes at, at an element from a consumer standpoint. 
Uh, but what is ex- what is required, and that's what uh, Shanti Ma'am also mentioned that yeah. whether it is ombudsman, whether it is banks, whether reducing the turnaround time from a third seven days from a th- fourteen days to a seven days or a thirty days to fourteen days. But unfortunately, the literacy element is not there. I didn't even knew there's an ombudsman process to be done. I didn't knew. Uh, I didn't knew that Ma'am said in the morning in the in the beginning that when I when I get a credit card. I have to put my limits on an e-commerce or an international transaction. So, yeah, as a, okay, so okay. as as a provider of the solution uh, to the places yeah. to stop fraud, if I don't have that understanding, imagine what what lies for the common man. And as a common man, I would always be disgruntled if I get cheated. Unfortunately, as uh, as 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 a consumer facing entity and as a consumer, I would always demand more. But there would always be checks and balances required at an enterprise level, at a bank level. Uh, unfortunately, there is no clear answer. Uh, I don't want to take sides, uh, uh, but but the but I would say literacy at the consumer end, and more controls and more customer facing understanding at the enterprise level, what is required, so as to have a balancing act uh, to yeah, solve this. I think we That's need more opinion. awareness. But Mr. Sharma, uh, you know, uh, Charlie mentioned this in the beginning. about you know as the digital literacy is rising so are the chances of fraud and you also spoke about mobile being that 24/7 and if anybody sends you an sms that your mobile will switch off because of this or that people immediately start reacting and maybe you know they may uh, not be that alert then so uh, you know being in charge you know uh, at a very senior position at the cyber security uh, apparatus of the country you are also saying that digital literacy is actually exposing us more what should we do then uh, we you know governance is coming through online uh, platforms the digital governance is there all kinds of activities are happening digitally government promotes it uh, private enterprises promote it even schools are promoting it but we are also getting exposed to more scams so what should we do should we not go that much digital should we go back to the physical or uh, what is the way forward for the users uh, I, there are so many people listening to us in this no first of all uh... there is no question of going back uh, pankaj we are all uh, going digital and this is the way we have to live uh, there is no choice see you can't imagine now uh, going to a uh, booking to a railway ticket you go to uh, the line like we used to do 20 years back uh, stand in the line for 2 hours and uh, booking a railway ticket are going to the airline counter and booking a, a flight ticket we can't do that now so we we are uh, all connected and this is the advantage we have and uh, we are getting benefits out of it uh, we have managed the pandemic situation because of the digitalization we have to appreciate the services given by the online platforms banks and uh, the telecom service providers in those difficult times Uh, we have uh, reaped the benefits of digitalization and survived uh, during the pandemic period the more you go to market physically there the more you are risking your life actually during the, those times and by sitting at home at your convenience we are getting the goods at our doorstep so this is the uh, life we have to live this coming to your uh, point the more awareness is required awareness is not only that uh, regarding the frauds but also the typical usage terms and conditions see the problem with the uh, with the situation is to be honest the long uh, types of terms and conditions paid that comes along with the credit card or debit card or bank account that comes True. reading the entire things and uh, similarly while uh, going for online service also that uh, all terms and conditions we all go crawl back and uh, yes i agree we don't have a patience to read all those terms and conditions it's very difficult the main important thing is that how do we communicate the most important thing in our country is not only the english we should communicate in local languages and yeah. i think to the resources part uh, here the more we communicate better and we can't uh, call the customers to the bank branch and uh, give lectures about this it is impossible so the more important thing is using these online medium same the online medium to go yeah. more and communicate uh, regarding the usage of your uh, digital equipment how to use your uh, uh, equipment, mobile phone and all those things we are doing our bit government is doing various schemes i'll i'll tell you uh, briefly very briefly the resources are available first of all for lodging complaints cybercrime.gov.in is uh, one uh, website uh, where the complaint is to be lodged and in the back end uh, it actually forwards to the concerned uh, police station and uh, cybercrime cell there is integration is already there in the back end that is number one and uh, there is a helpline earlier it used to be 155260 now it is 1930 this 1930 helpline is for cybercrimes dedicated 
so uh, any user uh, when he suspects in cyber crime effect he can call on there and uh, lodge his complaint that is uh, important and uh, from our uh, agency perspective we have a website certhypen.org.in this is more of the technical personnel for the technical people uh, to uh, understand the vulnerabilities threats and virus alerts etc and take measures but for the citizens we have a website called uh, cyber swachhta kendra and this website uh, we uh, track the infected systems uh, are based on the ip address and the computers and mobile phones and we give message to the uh, isps through internet service provider we reach out to the customer to say that his system is infected and when we receive the message he can come to this portal that uh, csk.gov.in and he can download free bot removal tools or malware removal tools and this we are creating in collaboration with our antivirus partners like quickheal k7 escan we have created free tools uh, to remove malware from the computers and also for the mobile devices so people can freely use these tools to disinfect their systems because various kinds of key loggers and malware do proliferate so these are the resources that are available apart from that uh, we have a twitter channel from the uh, ministry of home affairs called cyber dost on the cyber dost twitter channel and facebook page alerts are given on the latest scams that are going uh, that are happening and this is proliferated yes. in english and hindi and we yes. have another website from it perspective that, that is called infosec awareness.in this website is hosted in all uh, indian languages like telugu uh, tamil assamese bengali uh, hindi all local languages this particular uh, website is hosted and the material is created for students children parents teachers uh, senior citizens uh, everywhere uh, like this so these resources can be used and uh, anyway banks are doing phenomenal uh, job they are sending materials uh, and uh, creating awareness those uh, things are very much important for every news scam that is coming in awareness is created uh, to give the modus operandi i think more and more communication with the users and another uh, important uh, point when you see this message that is coming on whatsapp that uh, like uh, some two ticks are coming uh, which is you are being monitored and those kind of things the user can do a fact check on the pib fact check website and uh, as times verified you are running a website there the, the, we should be more aggressively uh, giving out the fake message and saying that this is the uh, not a fact this is right, a, right. Uh, a scam those kind of things are more and more uh, required that is my so, uh, it's very important that i'll repeat it that we don't uh, need any otp to receive money we don't need to download any app to receive any you know sudden gift or anything there is a helpline uh, which is 1930 this is a dedicated helpline for cyber crime uh, otherwise uh, you can lodge a complaint at cybercrime.gov uh, and uh, you know so these are some of the remedial uh, these are the places from where you can get some kind of an action against any fraud uh, rajit uh, uh, coming back to you this, this looks like you know almost like a moment marketing kind of a thing so if it's an ipl going on there'll be a, fr a fraud related to ipl if it's covid season or vaccine so there'll be a fraud related to vaccines now bitcoin is the flavor of the season in terms of financial investment so people are you know crypto and bitcoin uh, frauds are happening uh, are companies have you seen the budgets uh, to you know counter these kind of frauds go up across banks across corporates uh, uh, how, how what is the trend like right now charlie mentioned that 15 16% of their overall it spends so uh, overall rajit what kind of trends are you looking at in the corporate and banking sector in terms of investments uh, for cyber security sure no again it's it's good that you asked this question pankaj because i think uh, while uh, i would i would put it more from a sector standpoint like i think banks traditionally have been more regulatory driven so i think there's always been that focus to you know be more cyber aware cyber security budgets are always there and i think banks have been you know because they deal with so much of you know confidential data of the customers so i think apart from regulatory aspect i think they also have a responsibility so i think banks have been you know doing a great job there uh, when it comes to other sectors right maybe there is it pharma or you know like for example you mentioned about you know uh, scams related to covid at the time we had seen a huge you know sort of wave in which pharma companies were hit with you know ransomware attacks right so i think obviously the fraudsters are are well aware about all these things so they they typically go about you know doing this stuff and they they research well about the client so the budgets have uh, have definitely increased i think even in the recent world economic forum apart from climate change sustainability cyber crime was a very important focus area globally for the yeah. world economic forum because i think 
you know the the there is a board level focus now across all the organizations right so definitely the budgets are increasing but i think again uh, the, the the challenge that we see is typically it all depends on you know uh, clients uh, unless and until they see it as a big problem they don't want to proactively sort of invest in a lot of these technologies to sort of uh, ensure they're able to secure their data right the focus is definitely increasing but i think i think mid size uh, businesses small size businesses they simply don't have the the budgets uh, to do uh, because they are building a business like for example startups right it's not easy for them to sort of uh, dedicate money to do these kind of activities but uh, they have to sort of prioritize what, what is important for them as a business uh, but definitely cyber security should be one of the top agendas uh, that i i right. at least i see most of the clients adopting it and i think the awareness is definitely there right right uh, let's uh, take some questions from the audience uh, because obviously many of them want to know more about this issue uh, uh, so i'll take a question from uh, there's a gentleman called gb gb chakko and uh, i think the question is for uh, shalini that lots of banks uh, have partnerships with fintech companies who help these banks in acquiring new customers in the banks how safe are these platforms um thank you very much for that question i think it's a very apt and appropriate question um so clearly um you know as i mentioned earlier the ability to open accounts in an end to end digital form has been enabled in the country through various things the aadhar capability the uh, mobile banking connectivity uh, mobile connectivity that is there the regulations regarding vk uh, video kyc etc so this has helped uh, increase access to digital accounts and the numbers have been going up federal has a partnership with two such entities and we open quite a large number of accounts uh, per day through the entity so the specific question first of all we have to recognize the fact that the accounts are very safe because the underpinning um and uh, you know am kyc aml all of those norms are dealt with by the bank the partner provides the user experience the partner provides the um the user interface the partner provides all that but the the ultimately the responsibility arises with the bank the bank holds the money the bank knows the customer the bank retains the data for the customer the bank shares the data for the customer only on need basis with authorization and approval that extend they are very safe and secure and the the way the accounts are opened there are many checks that are done before the account is opened i think i um, spoke about some of them like the face match and the liveness check the entire video kyc process is a very very robust process because it is done by the bank's agent uh, bank's relationship managers who actually speak to the customer so um in short um assure the cust- uh, the public at large that these are safe accounts um they have uh, capabilities which are uh, quite um, suited for what we call the digitally native customer the salaried millennials who probably have never seen a bank branch and may not want to see a bank branch so yeah. for that a profile of customers these are quite safe and uh, secure ultimately i would um, you know all customers should take adequate precautions at their own level in terms of making sure they don't download the app as mr sharma rightly pointed out they don't download the app based on a link go to the play store go to the app store that's the only way you can download it all of these have device binding uh, capability which means your sim is actually registered and bound and you need to uh, authenticate yourself through that sim in the future uh, when you do transactions so all precautions taken i think uh, customers can be aware and um, you know can take comfort in the fact that all of the precautions have been built into those apps yeah right 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 there's a question for mr sharma from uh... the pulse and i guess he said that as mr sarva pointed out why are the terms and conditions of banks so long that it becomes really painful to go through the entire points is it banks way of, of absolving themselves of any responsibility in case something goes wrong by saying it was mentioned in the fine print so uh, uh, mr sarva if you can answer then maybe shalini can come in uh, uh, on this uh, terms and condition issue because you know obviously you know they are so long that you know going through it and it is usually take it or leave it kind of a scenario so what we do as a cyber security agency do you give some recommendations to the government as well that you know there should be some checks and balances which also you know make it very clear to the customer what he is signing on no no my intention is not uh, that uh, pointed to the long terms and conditions what i say is uh, in the long uh, terms and conditions whatever the features like you should uh, you can have checked and balances 
but disabling international transactions and uh, enabling uh, chip based uh, verification and those kind of features should be more prominently mentioned and uh, that's what uh, my intent was it's not that uh, it, that uh, something is being camouflaged in terms of uh, terms and conditions uh, more and more these kind of features which aid in the safety of the account that need to be more prominently uh, displayed to the and uh, told to the customer and uh, that is what is more important thing these messages are coming up uh, from banks uh, again and again that they, wherever these new features are added uh, like pin and uh, enabling transactions for international and then as and you travel it need not be done uh, like and you can check uh, have limits also that gives you a yeah. fair amount of safety when you limit these amounts of these transactions uh, like in the pos and uh, other places also that's what my intention was and probably ms shalini can more clarify uh, yeah. on that thank you mr sharma if i can come in on that um, pankaj um so i think um, you know uh, increasingly as mr sharma says the terms and conditions are obviously a legal document and you know need to be that but banks are conscious of the fact and cognizant of their responsibilities that they have a broader purpose and not to, and banks have to do it or the regulator is also playing a very critical role on this and i think rbi has to be commended for the kind of role they're playing so a few examples that probably make this clear Uh, just three days back, I'm not sure many of you would know, but just three days back, the regulators come out with a, a new circular for cre uh, credit cards and debit cards, where one of the three, uh, one of the conditions in that circular, which all of us are required to now adhere to, is uh, something called an MITC, a most important terms and conditions. It is a very simple one pager, which um, you know gives you all the most important. So while the legalese may be there, this most important terms and conditions have to be put in a very clear and concise fashion. to the customer up front at the time when the credit card or debit card is being sent similar nice. rules apply for certain other products so that's one example the other example is the card controls example which i alluded to earlier and mr sharma was referring to and i think uh, you know amit said he wasn't aware of which is the ability to think so no card can be sent out with uh, contactless enabled with ecom enabled etc they all have to be done by the customer either by on his mobile banking on his internet banking or by calling the call center and limits can be set on that so i think uh, you know banks and the regulator combined together are playing a very very important role in making sure that the critical uh, utilities or capabilities are highlighted to the customer can we do more absolutely i think more education is always required and always welcome and again banks are doing a lot rbi is doing a lot i mean just last a couple of weeks back rbi came out with a very nice booklet called raju and the 40 thieves on um, you know it's it's yes. that allusion to that uh, alibaba and the 40 thieves but very well um, documented and you know people should use it actually you know because it gives you 40 very very practical cases where customers are losing money and why that is happening so i think the education is something we're all doing i don't uh, to mr to your earlier point i don't think we should throw the baby out of the bath water yeah. because we've got frauds i don't think any of us want to go back to standing in a queue for a railway ticket or a uh, worse still coming into a branch to do an you know small fine transfer of uh, you know 5000 rupees to somebody so yes we've got to take those precautions and it can only happen if collectively regulator government uh, banks like us and consumers come together but i think uh, a lot of progress made um, and uh, lots more to be done Right, right, right. Uh, Amit, uh, how? Uh, what is the role of AI ML in all this? You know, uh, this is a very fashionable word. Uh, you know, every industry speaks about AI ML, AI ML. Uh, but despite all that, you know, despite understanding the trend, sometimes you know, uh, we still fail to detect uh, some of the very common frauds. You know, uh, which have been happening over a decade, and you know, still, despite all the AI ML and all. We've not been able to stop uh, stop them. There are moment marketing kind of uh, frauds, but there are frauds which have been happening for so many years. We've still not been able to do anything about it. Uh, see, uh, so I would say that uh, it has to. Every technology would have loopholes, and every technology would have learning curves as we adopt. And one is technology. Second is process. Third is the man in the middle, which is human. so there would always be this kind of a models which would be adopted uh so uh, to get to cut it short uh, technology has improved some of the steps on ai ml kyc amls uh, anti money laundering and other data sections has been done now with account aggregators also coming up 
there would be a lot of data consolidation which will happen and this should help in more efficient data collect data sharing across different entities to resolve absolve those kind of elements uh but moment ma- moment marketing these kind of frauds will continue to thrive unfortunately uh whether uh, but i think what is need of an rs to create a consortium across different ecosystem players and create that sharing of information to solve it for example if a bank x or an e-commerce player y has different kind of frauds and there are same set of users or same set of abusers are doing it whether it is an enterprise or it is a consumer that information exchange needs to happen it can't sit at one entity it can't sit as it is a government mandate or it is at a bank's mandate so like the information like for example if all indian consumers are reporting fraud onto a central database 1930 number what is there yes. what it takes to share that database to a bank share that database to an e-commerce player share that database to providers like us where we are solving a problem of course if there are certain check Excel balances required so that it is not misused. Uh, feel free, but unless and until that kind of stuff happens, it would always be a cat and mouse game, and and the fraudsters would always be a step ahead because it's a full fledged industry, whether we like it or not. It's a full fledged, robust industry, and I'll give you some stats. Out of advertisement budgets, about twelve to fourteen percent of the advertisement budgets are wasted in fraud, and I'm talking pure advertisement fraud. I'm not talking about identity thefts and others. Globally, it is a fifty billion dollars per ad industry. Sales, marketing, and other impersonation is about six hundred and seventy-nine billion dollar problem globally. So, and we are talking about seven hundred billion dollars of twelve to fourteen percent. What? What do you say? Is being, I lost you in between. Twelve to fourteen. Twelve to fourteen percent is an ad-related frauds. But if I, which is about forty billion, forty to fifty billion dollars globally, whereas if I look at impersonation, if I look at financial fraud and all these, it's close to about seven hundred billion dollars globally. So I mean, that's the quantum of the money what we're talking about, and and hence I said it's a full-fledged industry, which is right, thriving, right, right, right. which is thriving. Now what needs right. to be done is how do we, as a as responsible organization, responsible people, how do we solve it? Media right, right, right. doing your job. banks regulator government i think it needs to come together it can't work in silos that's i think that's my closing remark if it needs to be solved it needs to be solved together no single individual can do it that's, uh, that's it. Uh, thanks avit uh, rajit what are your closing remarks and also uh, kumar aryan uh, aryan has asked you whether uh, these frauds are more prevalent in uh, tier 1 uh, or they are more in tier 2 tier 3 though we answered that uh can we have your closing remarks as well sure no i think some wonderful thoughts shared by by everyone on the panel so my closing thoughts would be i think one is obviously awareness is a key second is i think uh as amit mentioned i think we don't need to work in silos we need to uh, look everything as a package look at look at all the issues together i think uh, banks are doing their bit regulators are doing their bit i think users also have to take some responsibility in terms of you know increasing their awareness right i think they simply can't just say okay i i you know i'm a customer you know i need this problem to get solved right i think well, again typical example would be social media right we keep our uh, you know uh, lives private lives in the public domain all the time and then at the time we are not uh, you know sort of uh, you know so holding ourselves responsible if some misuse happens right because we ourselves yeah. are giving that opportunity to fraudsters right where we are keeping all our information which which is very private to us including our names our photographs we are openly sharing it right while there are options existing uh, for us to keep it private right so i think that's where i think the the responsibility on the user individual also is very important they need to uh, be aware uh, just like they would hope that their money is safe in a bank they also have to ensure their presence online is also being equally you know taken care, uh, taken care and they are making those efforts to keep themselves safe right right thank you uh, shanli uh, your uh, closing uh, comments on this um, uh, thanks pankaj uh, it's been an interesting conversation over the last hour or f- and a few minutes um, diverse uh, mix of people on the panel uh, but i'll take off from where ranjit actually left it which is to say there is no one single individual or one single 
entity or one single organization who can address this. It has to be the collective will of um, uh, the government, the regulators, financial institutions, banks, um, you know, and other entities, the telecom operators, and the consumer themselves, coming together for all of these and making sure, you know, we take it to the next level from yeah. awareness standpoint, from a control perspective, is absolutely imperative. We've always got to remember that the fraudster is likely to be two steps, if not more, ahead of us. So how do we collectively ensure that we keep ourselves abreast of what is happening out there and find mitigating controls for them? So that's really what I would leave it with, um, Pankaj. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, and as the government always has the last word, Mr. <laughs> Sharma, what are your last words that uh, you have closing remarks? No, uh, we are a government agency, but we work with uh, various stakeholders, actually. We uh, work with large uh, kind of stakeholders like service providers, telecom service providers, and international agencies, social media service providers. Everyone uh, wants to do good, actually. But unfortunately, the scale is very huge. And uh, what we say is uh, more and more uh, reporting will be required. Uh, individuals are reporting, but, uh, you know, individuals need to be, uh, users need to be aware of where to report. Like uh, we, we see cases where uh, users uh, had an outcry about uh, their bank or telecom service provider or some service of uh, gas or something like that. And they simply write on to some blog or something uh, somewhere. And uh, attackers see those messages and say that, oh, you have a grievance with this, uh, so-and-so bank. I am calling from the bank. And they uh, pretend to be uh, calling from the bank and uh, they lure again the customer for more uh, cheating and those kind of things. So where to report is more important. As I mentioned, the uh, helpline of uh, law enforcement is there and a certain website is there and we have a help desk and we have a, a incident account where a phishing website, et cetera, can be reported. And we are working on the back end. Already lots of lots of integration is happening and uh, uh, law enforcement agencies across uh, different states share information through centralized portals. And, uh, and as a media, you also have a big role to play where particularly uh, when, uh, when fake and uh, phishing and misinformation is being propagated, you can uh, create a website where you can announce that this is a fake information, uh, do not rely on this, and those kind of uh, things can happen. And more and more awareness to be created. And one by last point is my thoughts is, uh, whatever these uh, uh, awareness messages are there, more and more local language content need to be created. Uh, we are only relying on English yeah. and uh, somewhere in Hindi. But uh, better to create all these conditions, like when you used to get uh, some goods no? in uh, Spanish, English, Arabic, German, all script languages will be there. So you search for English and you read the uh, English. Like this, all these languages, uh, the same material can be created and propagated so that uh, people will uh, get more connected to that content and then uh, assimilate that content. That's from my thoughts. Sir. Thank you. Uh, very, very apt, actually. We need more vernacular kind of messaging as well to inform uh, customers in various parts of the country. So broadly, uh, you know, we, uh, you know, from the discussion, we understand that, you know, do not fall into the trap of greed or fear. First of all, use your common sense. If there is any fraud that you've noticed, uh, uh, unfortunately, within uh, with your own self or with somebody else, please report it as fast as possible. There are helplines, obviously. Uh, we all need to create more awareness, right, from the media to the regulator, to the banks and to you know the consultancy firms like uh, what Amit where Amit is working or where Anjit is working, uh, we need more coordination, faster coordination, and we need to be alert 24/7 because 24/7 is not just mere slogan, uh, but actually it's it's the need of the hour when it comes to financial frauds. Uh, so on this uh, note, I hope the users have been informed, and I hope uh, we all have. Uh, we all recognize the need of more coordination between our, our, ourselves. Uh, hopefully, hopefully there'll be uh, there is some hope. People are uh, people will be more aware, and people will be more alert. Thank you all for joining us for this uh, wonderful session, and hope to see you soon in some of the session as well. Thank you Thank so you. much. Thanks for the Thank time. Thank you very much, time. and uh, have a good day ahead. Thank you, everybody. Bye Thank bye. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks. Thanks so much. Thank you. Okay.